put everything together because he hid everything, everything in its place. The lines of this building match the cracks in the plaza. He never said this, but I think he's bad to roll. He, he, he would challenge you and say, take out your bag and find glass. About Corinthian columns and how a column has a base, a shaft, and a capital. The same is true of a Chicago school design. at a blue glass building, it didn't exist five years ago when I started on the river. That building, this new construction, that building, that building, that building, the river walk, none of it was here for five years ago. So a big changing point, and what used to be our city center back when we were just a small little town, but this is obviously where most people's attention is going today, and it's gonna be the new tallest building at Wolf Point. Uh, 60 story tall and new office building, uh, Salesforce, expanding our uh, workforce here in the Midwest. But most people's eyes are naturally drawn to these two. A uh, brand new sculpture uh, from last year by Santiago Calatrava in front of River Point, which is really one of my favorites. You got these inverted parabolas. Some people call it the Hot Pocket building, but I don't care. I still like it. I think it looks nice. Understandably though, most people's eyes are drawn to this guy, here to our right, uh, 150. So 70% of the building, most of the people who work here work above nothing, air. And so when gravity comes into play, all that mass is redistributed by the double cantilever, the red sheet, down to the primary concrete core of the building, which has large caissons drilled into bedrock. My favorite part? Look up. Eat you see the reflection. That's us right there. That is easily my favorite part of this design. Yeah, sure, give yourself a wave. That's good. I like that. We'll talk a little bit more about some of its engineering and why it stays up so well on our way back up. But next we're going to go to the left. Finished up in the last moments of 2020. We have a brand new blue glass office building here to our left. This is for uh, Bank of America, 110 North Wacker. Uh, the same architect behind the building we just talked about. Took this one here again along the river. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing a lot in these blue buildings, some people are calling them contemporary designs, they're sleek and glassy, is, is, is an actual draw to the river, right? A lot of times we're drawn to the crowns of buildings. As of late, a lot of these new office buildings invite your eye to the river or street level. Here you've got these uh, kind of inverted stresses. Unless I think they kind of look like uh, pitchforks or tridents. Uh, I think this is an, another big one where uh, everybody sees things a little bit differently. Uh, one of my favorite things I had heard from a passenger last year, they saw chicken feet. Remind me of art as a personal experience. Uh, we can talk a little more about it in a little bit as well. But first, we're going underneath maybe the loudest bridge with a bunch of city bus routes, so be warned of that. And on the other side, we're finding dueling Art Deco buildings. Both of these buildings are Art Deco, like we saw at the Merchandise Mart. Remember, limestone siding, vertical lines, and dark setbacks. The windows, they go back. They're also both from 1929, so they've known each other for a while. To the right, you have this beautiful riverside plaza, and to the left, not exactly. But they're built in the same year, so one of them had to be The strange one was actually the Riverside Plaza. 
especially today and especially if it's your first time on the Chicago River, it's important to note that for most of our history, the river was our sewer. Whatever you're thinking of, yes. It wasn't until really recently that people flocked to the river and we saw all these buildings impressive in the last 20 to 30 years. But it's a good example of a building really kind of setting the standard, looking forward, maybe having some optimism nearly 100 years before it's shipped. What I find most interesting is the buildings, to the right at least, they don't own their land. The rail companies and the rails were here first, and instead they leased the air rights to these buildings to be built on top for two million a year nowadays. Thanks for making an extra buck for um, two million Next up to our right, uh, for, this might be one of my favorite places to tour as well, kind of underrated, I think. The 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. It's almost like somebody took an architecture timeline out of a history book and said, let's build it in real life. Uh, starting off in the 1960s, you have black box modernism, kind of in its heyday. In the 60s, uh, some people refer to it as the Mad Men era of architecture nowadays. It's a good kind of uh, jumping off point. Following these binaries, less is more fun function approach, but it is worth noting now in the 70s, you get a white box, which is different, which I, can, I you know can sound kind of strange. It's called international style. Two things were changing. Uh, for one, you could play with some white or gray stone, which is the obvious one. The less obvious one is where we get the name. In the 60s, modernism, these black boxes, was a niche, kind of a nerdy architectural style, but it only took about a decade for these boxes to be being built where? Every major city on planet Earth. Still today, book a ticket anywhere that has an airport. This actually was our old post office in the 20s. We expanded it in the 30s. We moved out in 1996, and this redevelopment into an office building started in 2016. $800 million has been put into the redevelopment, and they're really just finishing touches at this point. Uh, and actually doing quite well uh, on leasing the office space. Yeah, they, there's two and a half million square feet there to lease, but uh, I think they're more than halfway there already even in tough times. I think a lot of the amenities for all people there. One of my favorites, they finished up last spring on a three and a half acre rooftop park. Uh, up there and it's going to have a bar for the tenants. It's got a running track, gardens, pickleball courts, basketball courts, and all with city views. So basically if any of you have a post office, I'm really trying to do it or something. Uh, the new post office moved over here to the right. Well, and there we go. We got the marketing campaign started already uh, as uh, they look to break ground on the read. I really do like uh, the new names that a lot of these uh, red places. The amenity rich living places, uh, the read, echelon, kind of sound like fragrances. Then let's go to this guy. Anybody recognizing Curve on the Creek? Kind of a Jetsons residence, uh, probably it's most popular. This is our friend Bertrand Goldberg in the Marina City Corner Pops, the student in Spondro. 20 years later, in 1986, it's a curved concrete city within the city. Not everybody's a fan. Uh, early cell phone users, not a fan. Looks like they found a way around the concrete walls, but uh, this was recently bought out and renovated back into uh, apartments being a private uh, condo residence is. Uh, really, um, Bertrand Goldberg, that city within a city, I think is equally as iconic. I just mentioned how all these new uh, luxury rentals in most major cities, they're with, uh, are referred to as amenity rich living. Right, they give you a rooftop garden, pool, a fitness center, chef's kitchens, movie rooms, uh, coffee shops, restaurants. That's a big selling point, more than the unit is today. And Bertrand Goldberg kind of had his finger on the pulse about that in fact. Hasn't been used in uh, about 10, 15 years. They phased it out even before they vacated it. Uh, but really, two things. I think it's a cool kind of marker of an industrial past, right? Where we have river walks here on the South Branch. It's good to remember that this river was our industry, right? 
uh, back in the day. This entire South Branch used for shipping purposes and manufacturing. So this kind of takes you back to that time. It's also just useful because this is what the old post office we just saw looked like before the renovation. 20 years of vacancy can really do it up. But this will be tapering a design. I know, this all sounds enthralling. Think about it this way, though. I've had some of their employees. Very nice people. Uh, it's great. We just don't call it that. Uh, it, you ask around. Uh, it's just we call it the Sears Tower because it was called the Sears Tower for 40 years. See, it's a blue green, blue green glass as it rises. We'll talk more about its structure. We'll get a little bit better views of the facade on our way back. Some reflections and stuff. Uh, definitely worth taking a stroll, even on a day like today. Just because you're not going for a swim doesn't mean it's not so lovely to take advantage of. Also, the Christopher Wheatley got a brand new paint job, and uh, 